Thanks, George. Uh, you were talking about angels and archangels. Yeah. Um, and having worked a lot with those entities, I just mm. wondered, is there any virtue in working with them? Um, okay, so what the God entity has done is created a dialectic. See, God created the image of, a de of the devil because it's a reflection of its own self. So who's God? God is an entity who has entered this universe, who has become self-deluded within its own ego, thinking it is the creator of all that is and all that exists. That's who, who God is. And it's a pure ego construct that resides in consciousness, in our universe. God is not the creator of this universe. God is an entity that's claiming to be the creator, not only of this universe, but all of the existence of the infinite nature of life. Do you understand what's going on here? One being claiming all of that. The infinite nature of life was never created. It has always existed. There's no beginning to it. There's no end to it. It always has been, always will be. This cracking, cracking the ceiling of the glass, I call it the glass ceiling of the God matrix. When you crack, when you crack this, it's, it's all over. Once you get this, once it lands inside of you, boom, it's gone. Then you will see all the lies in our world. You'll see them for what they are. But this is the key. This is the, this is the one that cracks it. Either you're infinite or you're a created entity. Now, my existence in this universe is a co-creation with me and the universal creator. Do you get that? My soul is a co-creation. I entered this universe from the infinite nature of life and, and, the, and, the, and the creator of this universe created this universe from the infinite nature of life. So it's one of us from out there, right? So it's, it creates this incredible universal paradigm. And then when we come in around these realms here, because there's like four levels of just getting a taste, just like dipping your toe in, and if you want to continue with the process, then you merge and you become one with the creator of this universe. And it's a co-creation. Soul is a co-creation. It is the part of you that is, it's unity, it's unified between you and the creator of this universe. God resides here, below the great void. This is the multi-dimensional grand cosmic arena. Above this line, technology doesn't exist. Yes, duality exists all the way to the top of this universe, but it's so fine up the top because it's light, it's vibration. The construct of this universe is this. It's vibration. Yeah? That's what, that's what creates this universe into being. So what the creator did was it expressed itself one way away from, from centre, from unity, and started going out of balance and then it realised, whoa, I've got to express myself over here, an absolute counterbalance of the initial expression, so then it can come back in a balance. And, and went, wow, that was a rush. <laughs> I, I want to do that again. So it did it again. See? And then it did it again. And then it just kept doing it. And it created this energy we call light and then manifested realities out of it and then we come inside of it. Now, out here in the, in the infinite nature of life, you've all got your own universes. This isn't the only universe. Yeah? Now, here's one for the quantum physicists. All the parallel universes in the multiverse are all other light-based universes and they all exist in this grand cosmic arena. I want to tell you that so you can begin to grasp the magnitude of this universe, how big it is. So you understand what I'm talking about. When I say God exists here in the upper realms of this arena, it's for good reason. All the countless parallel universes that quantum physics talks about exists here in the grand cosmic arena. 
This is the multi-dimensional grand cosmic arena. Outside of this universe is the omniverse, where we all have our own universes. Now, each of those universes are a unique construct because we have our own unique universal personality. It's its own expression. Therefore, it's going to have its own construct. Do you get that? This one is light. And we're all inside each other because it's the big fun part. Life is... The one thing I... When I was back connected to the infinite nature of life, the one thing I realised was there were common threads that ran through all of it, as far as I could perceive, because there's no end to it, right? So you can't perceive there's no totality. So there is no one infinite creator, which is the raw material. That's the same as a God matrix. It's um, the sense of adventure. Isn't that awesome? And love. Because it's, love is this energy, which is this cohesive harmony that just binds life together. It bonds life in a cohesion. That's love. It's a beautiful energy. And the sense of adventure is the key ingredient because <laughs> haven't we lost ours? Haven't we just, hasn't that just been pounded out of us in this reality? Where's that childlike sense of adventure and curiosity? Where's that gone? We're all boring droids, right? <laughs> what's, what's going on, folks? Hey? When's the last time you went and skipped in a park or something? Seriously. <laughs> yeah, so angels and ascended masters and all that, they are all in service to the light of God. I needed to take you on that journey to sort of give the background material to have that answer. And places, beings like Archangel Michael, for example, that is an office of position, to be the right-hand man of God. Archangel Michael hasn't always been that, that entity, the energy that is that, hasn't always been that and won't always be that. Yeah? So when that being's done, another one will step in to be the right-hand man of God. And all these beings are dedicated to the service to the light of God. We, many, I don't know, lots of people, including myself, we have played those roles. So it gets to the point where, because the, the realities, the heavenly realms that God creates, which you have to earn your way into, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a credit-based system. Yeah, if you say enough Hail Marys or whatever and pray enough times and all that sort of stuff, you've got to earn your way into those realities. And then when you do, it's all about good protocol, good behaviour. They're very sterile. And the love there has a hard edge to it. Like I showed you that Nordic before, and I said, feel the difference? This is kind of a hard edge to it. Now, you need to understand that we have been deprived of real love. You've been cut off from your soul, been cut off from the true nature of life and this reality. And what you've got to be careful of is what I call, I say, beware the cosmic candy. Because beings are going to come here, and it's all going to be about love, and it's all going to be about light. And people are just flocking to that energy like child in a candy store. Don't be so naive. Please. Don't be so naive. The only way you're going to get your true point of reference is deep down in here. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning, Jesus turns up in my room emitting all this light and just blasting me with all this love and light. And I literally stand up in my bed, then hop down off my bed. I say, what are you doing? I didn't ask you to come here. How dare you just impose on me like this? Because the energy that was coming out of that being was no match for the energy that's in my soul. The love you experience deep down in your soul. The heart of the Christos is in your heart already. It's already there. You don't pray to an entity outside of you. You don't invoke an entity to come into your heart, which is what a lot of the doc doctrine asks you to do. You have to accept Jesus into your heart is the doctrine. You're inviting an entity in. It's powerful stuff. I know there's a lot of energy coming out of me and I just commend you for 
handling it because it's a lot. Um, and I get it. Yeah? It's because the matrix here is so thick, <laughs> you've got to understand it's a lot of work to stand here and deliver and express the true nature of life in a reality that's constructed with so many lies and deception and falseness. Yeah? And because we're so used to lies, people come along who want to tell the truth and you get labelled a liar, a charlatan, a fraud, a disinformation agent. I get all that. I get all of that and a lot worse. I get it all the time. It's amazing how frightened people are of the truth.